Hello. Um, <clears throat> today I kind of want to just highlight some of my, uh, some of the films I really enjoyed um, that came out in 2012, you know, 10 years ago. <clears throat> um, so many great films came out that year and, uh, you know, I've talked about some of them already and I'll probably highlight, you know, I, or I definitely will highlight those at the end, but, um, I might not, you know, get to some of these films, um, later this year, but I kind of thought at least, you know, be good to, uh, just talk about some of them, you know, and, uh, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, first movie is, um, Lincoln, um, it's a, you know, obviously a film about, you know, Lincoln passing the 13th Amendment, and, um, you know, it's a fine film, it's a very fine film, directed by Steven Spielberg, starring Daniel Day-Lewis, who won Best Actor at the Academy Awards, and, uh, and I think I mentioned how I, I believe I have somebody else in mind who I think that was like, nominated who should have won. I'll get to that uh, later. But, you know, this has an excellent cast, you know. Daniel Day-Lewis, Sally Field, uh, David Strathern, Strathern um, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, James Spader, Al Hall, Albrook, Tommy Lee Jones, um, amongst so many other people. And, uh, yeah, I saw this in the theater. thought it was fine. I didn't love it as much as so many other people did, but uh, it's a fine film. It's one that, you know, it is nice to go back to. It's very good and um, well acted. And, um, yeah, I think it's worth uh, mentioning here. Um, this film, uh, uh, Ted, you know, I, I saw this in the theater as well, and it's a fine movie. It's... It is what it is. It's, you know, Seth MacFarlane film. It's Mark Wahlberg, Mila Kudis, and Seth MacFarlane. And uh, it's his feature film debut. And um, this film actually got nominated for an Academy Award for original song. It did not win. But the fact that, you know, Seth MacFarlane is an Academy Award nominee is interesting, I think. Um, you wouldn't think with the work that he's done like with film, that he would ever do anything that would be seen as um, Oscar-worthy. But then again, of course, you know, people are like, you know, they don't always make the best uh, um, decisions of nominations and uh, even wins. But this is interesting, and I think, you know, it's a fine film. It's not the absolute greatest, but it's fine for what it is. It's entertaining, uh, at least I thought, though <laughs> there's quite a bit of inappropriate humor, so if you're not interested in that, then I guess, you know, don't watch this. Um, Silver Linings Playbook, another film that's very good. Um, stars uh, Bradley Cooper, Robert De Niro, Jackie Weaver, Jennifer Lawrence, who won an Academy Award for this. Um, It's interesting, you know, Bradley Cooper's character is, like, lost so much, and he's having to, like, he's, like, has to, like, kind of, like, build himself back, and it's just a, it's a process, and uh, meeting, you know, him meeting Jennifer Lawrence, and just how all that comes together, it's very, you know, it's, 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 it's just very, it, interesting and very well done directed by david o russell who made the fighter two years prior um and that's my favorite film of his to this day and i i do enjoy this film and i do enjoy american hustle which was made after this film um but i don't know this is a fine film uh, well acted and pretty well written and just just overall an entertaining film um I enjoyed it uh, back when I saw it uh, about like 10 years ago, and I still do. Occasionally I'll just 
put this in and just enjoy it. Um, this film, uh, Zero Dark Thirty, I think um, Jessica Chastain should have won Best Actress this for this film. Um, amazing film, you know, about you know killing Osama bin Laden and all that, and obviously, you know, liberties will be taken, of course, but overall, it seems like uh, from when they actually go to do the job, you know, it seems like that's as accurate as, you know, can be. Um, I guess there could always be a more accurate uh, version of the film, um, or a version of that uh, done on film, but for the time, it was pretty good, and um, directed by Catherine Bigelow, who directed The Hurt Locker. She's a fantastic act, uh, director, and uh, yeah. Um, this was just uh, an, an amazing film uh, from beginning to end, and uh, definitely worth uh, watching, I think. Um, it's over two and a half hours, but I think it is definitely worth it. Um, there are parts of the film that aren't so easy to get through, but, you know, it was, that is how things were. You know, certain methods were would be done, of course, and, um, you know, on both sides, too, not just the American side, but, you know, both sides, you know, uh, unorthodox methods of getting information that is needed to... You know, do what they can to try and uh, complete any objective that they have. And so you get to see that, and it's not always... It's not always, you know, pleasant. Um, another film, uh, Looper. Um, I enjoy this film. Um, it's very well done. Um, You know, Ryan Johnson made this, and I know a lot of people are like, you know, like Ryan Johnson because of like The Last Jedi. And while I, do, I myself am not really fond of that film, um, I do enjoy this. This is a fine film. It's, I think it's a very good film. You know, Joseph Gordon Levitt and Bruce Willis uh, play Joe. Bruce Willis, of course, is older. And, um, and also the fact that, uh, Bruce Willis has now stepped away from acting because of the, um, you know, inability to communicate well. Like, you might be able to think things right, but just can't get the words out. And also has a hard time reading scripts and remembering the lines and everything. But the good thing with that is there are ways to improve that. And so... Um, ho hopefully within time, you know, they'll be able to, he'll be able to get better and who knows, maybe he'll even act again at some point. Um, I think the phrasing of the fact that his family didn't say outright he's retired might be an indication he may act again in some years um, if everything is good and he's able to, you know, communicate and remember lines and deliver them really well um hope the best for him you know i think he was a very good actor i know a lot of people said you know he didn't really care at times and just seemed to stop caring about acting and stuff at, at a certain point just did it for the paycheck and well with the diagnosis he got eh, maybe this is a uh, might explain some of that stuff but uh but this is a fine film you know um, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, it was like, you know, you know, they get rid of, uh, when mob go goes to get rid of certain people, they go and, uh, hire a looper, who, you know, send them back in time, and then they go and, like, uh, you know, have a looper go and kill them. And then the looper gets paid. And so, you know, there you go. And it's just a 
fascinating film. You know, it was about time travel. Of course, people are like, oh, well, there's certain things about time travel and this with films and how it's not good and whatever. It's an entertaining film. And, um, and Emily Blunt does a great job also. And, uh, you know, everybody, you know, and Jeff Daniels is in this. Uh, everybody does, you know, does an incredible job. Everybody brings their A-game, and I think that's fantastic. Um, and, um, Skyfall, you know, the 23rd and the 3rd film, you know, 23rd film of the James Bond franchise and the 3rd film with Daniel Craig. I didn't get to see this in the theater, but as soon as it was out, I got it and I loved it. And I just, I wished I saw it in the theater, but I saw Lincoln twice. I, I, like, I saw it with some friends again and... They they uh they wanted to see it and I'm like well, I already saw it but okay I'll see it again. I kind of wish we saw this but you know yeah you can't go back in time and everything but this was very good. Um, I think Daniel Craig has done a great job. I know I've talked about his James Bond before. And I still think he did an excellent job. I know there are people who complain about certain films during his, like, tenure as Bond. And I would say that, you know, some of that would have to do with, like, the writing. I don't think it has to do with his performance. Because I think his performance was always well done. And my mom mentioned something like what she liked about Daniel Craig's is they kind of made his James Bond more human. You know, not that James Bond wasn't didn't show human emotions before, but, you know, he could be fairly cold at times, which, you know, generally the situation would call for, but that is something that I thought was interesting in that comment. I think that is something that I think his Bond does very well, or his version he does very well, as, you know, you know, he helped make James Bond even more human, and that's, I think that's great. Um, so yeah, I, I really love this film. Excellent film. And, um, now I think I've mentioned in the past, I'm not the biggest fan of musicals. Um, and so there are cer certain musicals I do enjoy, and this is one of them, and that is Les Miserables. I know there are people who say it's overrated and this and that, but I enjoyed it, and I thought it was a fine story. I thought the music was good, and the singing and the performances. I know people think that Marcel Crowe is the weakest link, but I think his voice fit the character, I think, with the, the version that he was doing. I know there's other versions of, of course, out there that you can find online of various Broadway and other performances with Javert, but I think he did an excellent job. Um, I think even with his acting, I think he might have deserved another Academy Award nomination, personally. And Hathaway won Best Supporting Actress. Very deserved. She was incredible. And uh, Hugh Jackman was nominated for Best Actor. I think, though, that he should have won, you know, especially when looking at the ones nominated alongside him. I think he was the best. That's me. That is, you know, just my uh, opinion. But I do believe that he was the best. And I got this at Target, which was, you know, really cool because they had this little uh, booklet about the making of the film. And just really cool. Um, and, of course... We've got these little cards that you can go and have in front. Like, I just have a beard just because, I don't know why, I just thought he seems to get a lot of 
flack for his performance, like Russell Crowe, so I'll just have him there. And of course, you know, Jackman, you know, not Russell Crowe, Hugh Jackman as Jean Valjean. Um, and Hathaway as Fontaine. Amanda Seafried and Eddie Redmayne as Cosette and Marius. Um, Helena Bottom Carter and Sasha Baron Cohen as uh, Finnederiders. I often mispronounce their names. I apologize. So here, there's the names. And then there's uh, Isabella Allen as, a, you know, as young Cosette. Which is generally the poster and main face of, like, the book and all the stuff that you would see for, like, Broadway and such. And, of course, here's the film. And this comes with a bonus disc. I got that version, so that's really cool. And, uh, and I enjoyed the making of uh, stuff that they had and seeing what all they did to make the film come to life and singing live as opposed to what we're going to do is, you know, all the actors and actresses are going to sing and then lip sync on the set. Yeah. You know, pre-record everything and then just play it and they have to sync up appropriately and um and i think the the method they did was pretty good i know some people think that's kind of meh but i think it works here and i do enjoy this film um deserving of uh, the, a few uh, awards it got specifically you know Anne hathaway consistently won every award pretty much that she was up for she deserved it Thank you, Jackman should have won more than just the Golden Globe for actor in a musical or comedy. I think he was just the best uh, nominated, personally. But that's just me. And there might be some who are like me with that opinion, but I don't think that's the overall urging opinion. And then here is Argo, the best picture winner of the year. Uh, not my favorite film of the year. I'm sure all of you know what that film would be. But this is really good. And I think this was one of the best uh, Oscar Best Picture winners of the 2010s decade. That's just my opinion. Ben Affleck was great in this. I know there was some controversy because, you know, he's not like Mexican or Hispanic you know, descent, basically. And whereas... You know, his character like, was, but, you know, because Tony Mendez. And um, because I got this from Target, there's some special stuff. There is, like, a director's cut version of this that I would like to get at some point, but I just never did. But I saw this in the theater also, which, considering the fact that there's some political stuff in here, and I, you know, and I've never been a big political guy. <laughs> um, you know, even back then, 10 years ago, I really wasn't, but I happened to see stuff of this and I wanted to see it which kind of shocked my mom and then she saw it also and, and my grandparents saw it and basically everybody like I knew my siblings and such like we all saw this at some point and I believe it a lot of it was with this film version I this blu-ray people saw it and it's a very good film I enjoy it it's now, the film I would think is the absolute best picture of the year, but I think with those nominated, I think this is definitely um, one of them. And of course, you know, Les Miserables and Link Lincoln, Silver Lang's Playbook and Zodiac 30 uh, were all nominated for best picture. And I think this is amongst ones that was very deserving and I have no problem with it winning. And then here's another Best Picture nominee that I've already talked about, so I'm not really going to discuss it in further more detail. Django Unchained. 
Um, I love this film. I think it's an excellent film from beginning to end. I know there are people who aren't fond of it. That's fine. Um, but I enjoy it. I think it's a very well uh, made film. Well acted, well written, and directed. And um, I like the Steelbook. I know there are people who don't like steelbooks or don't care, and I get it. Some steelbooks kind of are, eh. But I kind of thought this was really cool, and I thought, I'd like to have that, and I was able to. And this also has, like, a special thing with the DVD, or, like, a... I have, like, the DVD and another thing, like, to travel with. And so, here's, like, the film, and then here's, like, a bonus uh, DVD of, uh... Comic-Con. And so with that, and there is like the back, which is pretty cool. Got a Jamie Foxx, Christoph Waltz, one best supporting actor, and um, Leonardo DiCaprio, who I think should have been up for supporting actor, but, you know, he wasn't. And then the last film, I'm sure you all know because of the fondness I have of it. I'll just put that right there. It is The Dark Knight Rises. I love this film. I've talked about it a lot on this channel. And um, just like Django Unchained, I will also leave like a link for that uh, above or wherever for the YouTube channel and such. And I just love this film. I think it's excellent. I think it's a great ending to the trilogy. Um, still love it ten years later. I just, uh, you know, and a lot of people like Occupy, Occupy Wall Street and such. But, you know, it, Occupy... The, the film had already been written by the time they were shooting this. So all that stuff was never a reflection of Occupy Wall Street. This was all written. This was already, like, done and just so happens as they were making the movie, something sort of similar that you, we see in the film of, with Gotham's and their citizens and then Occupy Wall Street sort of like, sort of have a reflection and that was never intended on Christopher Nolan's part. He never intended for that to happen. That just happened to uh, go on while making it. And so this was never meant to be a reflection of that it's just like a big coincidence it's one of those coincidences that happens that was never planned for it wasn't meant to be a commentary on anything going on in the real world it was already written and they were filming it and as they were filming it all that happened and so it was just very fresh in people's minds and that part was sort of inspired by a comic book of no man's land over like criminals and such like like overrun and are like in control of Gotham and all that stuff so that's the basis for that plot that uh, that part of the plot in the Dark Knight Rises you know Occupy Wall Street wasn't really a factor it was just a sort of like a One of those things that just happened and it reflected in the film, which was never intentional. Um, but yeah, I just love this film. I've already talked about it a lot and I'm sure some people are sick of me talking about it, would like me to never speak of it again and I kind of get that. But I love it and I had to mention it here because it's like it would be very weird if I didn't, I think. And so this is my favorite film of the year. I think it should have been up for multiple awards but i think because of the shooting that happened unfortunately um that had an effect on the fact that it didn't get acknowledged as much and when it was acknowledged it didn't really win too many like awards it won some awards but not too many it was listed as one of the best films of the year like the top 10 like with Django Unchained, Lincoln and Dark Zero Dark Thirty, Argo and Les Miserables, and I believe Skyfall was there, like, for the American Film Institute's top, like, ten films of the year. This was one of them. 
I believe it was deserving of that. Um, but yeah, um, I think Christian Bale did an excellent job in all three films, and I think he should have been at least acknowledged for the last two, you know, awards wise. Whether he would have won or not, that's another story, of course, but definitely deserved to have been acknowledged. Um, and for, like, supporting actors or whatever, you know, I guess, like, Michael Caine or Gary Oldman or Tom Hardy all could have been considered for supporting actors. Same with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Morgan Freeman, of course. And Hathaway, probably not, because of Les Miserables, so she probably would have never been acknowledged <laughs> for this film. But, you know, um, even though it isn't, wasn't, nominated for any academy awards even for like a technical award like visual effects or anything of the sort it is still talked about to this day a lot more favorably than uh, initially and i've already gone in through all that but i like how as time has gone on with a film like this people are um more you know more warm to it you know the reception is not at all as kind of sour towards it and, um, and I think that's great so it's my I guess brief as brief overview of these various films of course a couple I've already talked about and sometime in the future I may discuss the, uh, the all the the other films I've mentioned here in one way or another um and if so, I hope you'll enjoy my full-on discussions of those and just giving my thoughts in a more concise manner. Even if it is like the length of this video, you know, we're talking about various aspects of it. And hopefully, you know, it'll be pretty good. Um, I hadn't really done something like this before. If I did, it was just very like, whatever but i wanted to try and at least like have like a good number of some of the movies i really enjoyed from that uh, 2012 and i hope me just discussing it was pretty good um i enjoyed this um i hope you did too and um i just hope all of you are doing well hope all of you are having a great day and a great week and I hope uh, for the best for all of you. And uh, I hope your year has been pretty good. My year has been very good myself. And um, I hope all of you were, will just take care. And um, I will see you all next time. And uh, Thanksgiving will be next week. So I hope that will be uh, great for everybody who celebrates it. See you all next time.